Man, welcome. Uh, another week, one more rivalry. Uh, this week, it's a little different uh, just due to the fact, man, we don't have many games. We um, College football, end of the season, we're getting ready for playoffs for bowl season. Um, I think it's like South Dakota State's playing tomorrow. I know we've got Army, Navy. Um, but let's let's kick right into it, man. Did the playoff committee, did they get it right? Um, with the top four teams, man, TCU – Found a way to get in. Um, what what do we think uh, regarding the playoff committee and, and, and the decisions they made? Man, it was actually pretty tough on the uh, college playoff committee, man, like we had stated before. But I honestly, I think they got it right, man. I think these people want to see some different teams in there uh, competing, man. And I know people want to bring up Belmont getting in, but they they the first team had two losses. And then did you want to be – this to be the playoff that is, that they had the first two lost team in there. So um, I think they got it right, man. I finally watched TCU play, and you know what I'm saying? I like their style, and, and I think they'll give a, give a good game. Yeah, yeah man, I'm, I'm going to agree with, uh, with Smooth on this one, man. I think they got it right, man. When you talk about, you know, the, the best four teams at this time, you know what I'm saying, playing the best ball, I think, um, you know what I'm saying, Ohio State did, they did get – you know they, they got roughed up pretty good by uh by Michigan, but if you if you ask for the top four teams, man, uh I don't think Bama is in that top four at this particular time. They played better ball during the end of the season, but you look at how TCU lost to Kansas State. How Kansas State has been coming on the games that they've lost. Um, I think I think they got it right. The top four teams are in the playoffs, uh, and I'm, I'm I'm excited to see it, man. Kenny, what you think, bro? I don't think they got it right, man. Okay. I, I um I feel like Bama should have been. And why I feel like Bama should have been in, I'm not a believer in TCU, man. We all picked TCU to lose. Everybody knew that they were gonna lose last week. And the thing is, man, TCU, they gonna get up there and they're gonna probably get embarrassed, man. So we really want another embarrassment right now in the um in the playoff picture. Come on, man, that's not even good, man. The best team should play, and I felt like Alabama was just by their schedule, the guys that the teams that they lost to, and the teams that they lost to will beat TCU right now, and that's the thing about it. Everybody knows SEC, SEC is the power conference, and Bama they should have won, man. All their games that they lo- that they lost was tight. They didn't get the doze beat off on like Ohio State, even though Ohio State was playing against a good team. So, but TCU, man, I feel like this is gonna be a blowout. They <laughs> just they just wasted a week. Man, mm. man, mm. I'm I'm with like I like what Bell said, man. Ohio State's loss to Michigan. I think Ohio State deserves to be in. I think Georgia deserves to be in. Um but did they get it? They, they absolutely got it wrong. Uh, it's no way that you leave Alabama out of this playoff. Uh, when you think about the best four teams, who are the top four college football teams in the country right now? I just don't see – again, and, and I like TCU's ball club, but I don't think that they uh, earned, a, earned a spot to be in. The reason why, when you look at the losses, man, they lost to Tulane. We all know what SEC football is about. These these guys, these guys lost to, uh, these guys lost to some teams, man. That that can as, as far as Kansas State, Kansas State lost to Tulane, which which who that's who beat TCU. Kansas State lost to Tulane, and they also um, had a very close one, bro. With uh, Iowa State, ten to nine. I mean, when you think of whole bodies of work, when you think of strength of schedule, when you think of of a program top to bottom. How can you say that that TCU is better than a than a two loss Alabama who lost to the Vols, a great ball club who at one point of time people thought they had a Heisman contender, um, and they lost to LSU in Death Valley, um, great ball club as well, man. What's what's how can we say what they got it right? Because you, you, when you say body of work, you also got to look at when teams when they lose and how they lose. You look at how Tennessee lost to Georgia. Look at that. And then Tennessee comes on and gets beat by a, a mediocre South Carolina team. 
You know what I'm saying? And then you got Bama with two losses, a healthy LSU. You know what I'm saying? They lost to LSU strolls into the, uh, the SEC championship game and get their doors blocked by Georgia, but they're not healthy. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look at you, you look at the body at work, but you also look at who they lost to, how they lost, and then, you know what I'm saying, the, the frame of the season. And I think at this point in the season, Alabama with two losses, they know they're in the SEC, but you got to win those close games. Alabama got our coach. We talk about saving being a GOAT. Saving our coach itself in the last, what was that last drive of the game, right? Not not burning the timeouts uh, and not 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 controlling the ball before they gave the ball back to Tennessee. So uh, Saban, he got on there and tried to make a pitch for why his team should be in there, but he he coached his team out of opportunity to be in there. Oh, man. You, you don't hear that often, bro, as far mm-hmm. as Saban coaching his team out of positions to win the game. Yes, sir. Uh, but Man, it's, it's, do y'all think it's um more of the pressure of everybody just want TCU TCU to be in there? Because of fellas, at the end of the day, TCU is TCU. We knew what they what they was. We knew TCU wasn't gonna be undefeated. No matter what, you can go in the college college um season every year and everybody say, watch out for the um TCU, watch out for TCU. At the end of the year, they will end up with a loss at a at a pivotal time. Everybody knows that. So my thing is, is it more the pressure of them just won't TCU in there and everybody just tired of the same old Alabama thing? Are they are they felt pressure of putting them in there on that on that end? Or is Alabama just a regular Alabama team? I think I think uh human nature plays a part in it, man. And whoever on that committee hating on saving, man. That's what I think. They hating on saving, man. Cause I, bro, I don't how do you put a TCU team in? Uh, who lost to Kansas State and the losses that Kansas State has, man. I know, Bill, you just explained it, the wins. You just can't do it, man. You got to put Bama in. We, you, I just say look at the time. Kansas State only game. lost two games? Kansas State lost three. They lost the uh, Tulane, Iowa State, and who else? They lost to somebody else. I don't know, but they, they, they lost three games. They lost to Tulane. They lost to Iowa State. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to grab this third loss, man. Did TCU, they beat Texas? They, no, TCU. TCU. TCU oh, beat them the TCU first time around, the, right? Yeah, and we yes, talked sir. about how hard it is to beat a team twice in the same season, right? But like I said, they they Alabama didn't make it to SEC. How they made it to SEC championship and lost, and that was their second loss. That's different. They didn't get a chance to play for a championship. TCU played for a championship in their conference, man. So that goes in fact, you know. Great what I'm point. Great point. Two, great two point. Losses by USC, they lost in their championship game. They fall out. You know what I'm saying? So you would I think, think that's that why they, TCU remained in. You would think that the fact that SEC is so tough and all these top five teams kept on get um losing within the conference of the SEC, you would think that speaks more for Alabama. But ah, uh, fella, I'm not with this TCU. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna watch the game. <laughs> I tell you what, they're expanding it in uh two years, so I don't think we'll be having this conversation. It'll be eight teams in, and we'll be talking about are they letting too many teams in? Because it it'd be some landslide games even with eight teams. In. Hey, not so fast, my friend. But guys, let's not overlook, man. This TCU Michigan match, I'm definitely gonna be tuned in. Yeah, me um, too, man. This is not gonna be. It's it's not gonna be a pushover. I tell you that. Hey, it's gonna be, gonna be the does off them, man. No, nah, man, it's going to be a fight, man. Guys in the playoffs, man, it's going to be a ball game. But, again, um, man, as much as I hate to say it, man, Belma, Belma deserved to be in there, I think, man. So, man, how we feeling um, just in general? Who who you think take it home? When you when you look at, you know, where we're at right now, is Georgia, is Georgia the runaway here? That's what it's looking like to me. Sadly to say, man, hey, man, I I think so, man, and and the reason I say this, man, is they they Kirby Smart is all, absolutely built something great over there, but man, they got a quarterback who's, who is the same age as Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson's been in the league what three years, yeah. <laughs> so when I say that, I I say, and I hate to use the word game manager, but that that cat he don't put George in bad positions, man, and you got you got to take that into account. We talk about field position, we talk about a turnover battle. He, he don't put he helps Georgia out tremendously, and that that's not talked about, right? Uh, so I think as good as Kirby Smart is, as good as he has the defense plan, man, you got to get that cat Stetson Bennett credit, man. And 
And he does a lot for that team with the, putting them in good position, but also not putting them in bad position. So, man, I think definitely think Georgia is the favorite, and I think they will win the national championship. Mm -hmm. Man, how how big is that first matchup, boy? That Georgia Ohio State game. I think that's a big matchup, yo. I think that's a big matchup, and don't sleep on Ohio State. Man. They got the playmakers. They got the playmakers. Yeah, that's um, what I'm looking. They got punched at. in the mouth, and um, I think they come back a little stronger, man. Um, I think they match up a little bit better with Georgia. I know Georgia's uh will be prepared. It's another home game for them. They haven't had a tough road test yet. But I think that uh, Ryan Day has those guys prepared and are ready to play, man. It's going to be a battle of uh, a lot of top athletes. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, that's the one. Like you said, but they got some ballers, man. What, what, you, what you shake your head about, Bill? Because, man, I, I, I just think about it, man. C.J. Stroud didn't look good against a Michigan defense that's, that's not as good as a Georgia defense, man. And I think when, when, when you talk about Muschamp, you talking about him being able to scheme up and, and how to how those pressures dialed up for the quarterbacks, man. I think, man, they I think I think Georgia creates some turnovers, some big turnovers. I think they get CJ Stroud. Like, like, like Smooth said, home game, the dome will be rocking, man. I think I, I don't think it'll be close, man. Cool. Oh. Oh. I can see that. I can really see that, man. And um for me, I think it's come down to um Georgia. If they gonna lose anything, I'm um, just being honest, man. They if they lose, it's gonna be because of Georgia. I feel like they just they should be to walk away with with everything, man. Because that that running back from Michigan, he down. And I feel like that's really the identity of Michigan. They are gonna run the ball. They gonna they gonna run the ball, play good style defense, and they are gonna make you make mistakes. They ain't gonna let you just straight in, just come in and beat them like that. What they did against Ohio State was clinical. And nobody could see that coming to that effect. But my deal is, I feel like Georgia going to win it all. I feel like they walk away with this. We just wasting time right now. Ah, all right. I already know we're going to win it, baby. Damn, bad to bad. Man, yeah. the Bulldogs and Kirby. All right, man, moving along, the biggest news of the week, man. Uh, prime time, Dion. He moves along. He, he he leaves Jackson, Mississippi, and he's headed to Colorado. Uh, which for me, for me, uh, means that he was willing to leave Jackson State, and Auburn did not offer. Um, that's what it tells me, man. When I look at Dion being willing to leave, leave um, how could he not have been really considered seriously uh, for the for the for the Auburn job? Um, what's y'all's thoughts there? Was that a miss? Um, we ended up getting Hugh. AD says this was his guy all along, which means, again, uh, we talked about it. Lack wasn't considered, really. And Dion definitely was not an option, man. Uh, did we miss out? Do, do, is, is he a fit for Auburn? What y'all think? Is he a fit for Auburn? Is Deion Sanders a fit for Auburn? I think uh, schematically and with all he brings, I think he would be a fit for Auburn. But the aura and and, and uh, bolsterness that he, that he gives off, I don't think they're ready for that. Um, Deion is what you would say is a true black man. Uh, all his homeboys coming with him, bringing his son, they grilled out, chains on. I don't think Auburn really ready for that, man. Um, it would be a different a change. I think I thought we could have been ready for it, you know, appointing Cadillac. I thought that was a, a step in the di right direction. But as far as, you know, actually giving him a call and really considering him for the job, I don't think we ever did that. I think we just all talked. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I definitely didn't hear nothing about us really giving him a call, talking to him, sitting down with him. Um, or having no discussion. But again, if he was willing to go to Colorado, you would have to think that he would have been considering at least what we had to say. Um, yeah. Again, man, we all, we, we could expect that. And I'm, I'm with you. Um, I don't think he's he's a perfect fit for Auburn in our culture, bro. Uh, obviously, we would have loved to see Dion down there leading the guys. Um, but I, I don't know. You know, if I can't say 100% that it would have led to success. 
I think that he's going to have a lot of success at Colorado. Um, but I can't say that if he would have came to Auburn, it would have led to success. I don't know if that made sense, but um, it's a lot of factors going to winning ball games, bro. Y'all know how it is. I think it was a strategic move for Deion, man. Uh, moving to Colorado, not much expectation. They came off a of one in the eleven season. Um, just the fact that USC and UCLA will be moving in the next couple of years to the Big Ten. Um, you know, he really the only big dogs he had to knock out is Oregon and Utah. Yeah. So I think he'll be able to, you know, definitely recruit anywhere. Um, a lot of people go want to come play for him. You already see that. So I think he had all of that in mind, man. Um, just going straight into Auburn just would, 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 would have been a whole lot for him, man, going up against Kirby, Nick, uh, Lane. Um, who else we got, man? Uh, Florida, Tennessee. It's just it – will, it will be a whole lot harder to, to be successful at this point as opposed to going straight to Colorado. Mm-hmm. I, I think definitely think Dion was uh was thinking about was being strategic within his move, but Auburn definitely missed on this one. And <laughs> um, I don't think Dion would have shied away from that challenge, man. I think Dion would have embraced it. He took it head on, man. That's that's you know this is arguably the one of the let's say top twenty, top ten players and and athletes. You know what I'm saying? To ever top five, I like it smooth athletes to ever Easy. you know what I'm saying touch any any professional level man so he, he this guy ain't shying yeah. away from no any challenge at any level um Auburn definitely missed we knew they missed we talked about it like Kenny said rewind the tape we talked about it we knew <laughs> they missed you know what I'm saying so uh, I definitely think um he, he made the right move as far as getting the power five I definitely think that was a goal of his he's not stopping there he he'll probably end up in the SEC somewhere. Uh, he he'll do good things at Colorado. He he get five six. He get he get Bo eligible at Colorado next year. They they gonna be praising him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they they gonna be rolling all kind of primetime videos. You know what I'm saying on all platforms. So man, uh, I definitely think we missed on this, but but hats out to Prime uh, and him taking that next step. I'm right there with you. I think he missed on it. I mean, I think we missed on it bad. Um, I think we missed on it to the point of I feel like being honest, Dion, the only coach that could probably get us back on that level that we want. Mm. And the level that we want when it comes to Auburn and what we think of ourselves and what we we believe in competing for, um, for championships. SC championship, national championship. That's it. We don't believe in just having good years and all that. I feel like with the coach we got now, we'll have a good couple of years. That's it. And when I mean good couple of years, we probably get what two losses or whatever. We're a two loss team, two loss program. That's a good year. But what Dion could have brought for us, I feel like he could have brought us stability and built and built the foundation as in a winning, <clears throat> a winning foundation. And do I feel like I feel like he's he kind of just he should have chilled on the Colorado deal. I don't think that's a good fit, being honest. But Dion, you know, he can make anything work. I do believe in that. But I would have chilled on it. I probably wouldn't have went to Colorado. And um, the pressure, expectations, smooth. I feel like with Prime, expectation going to be with Prime no matter what. What he did with Jackson State, Colorado looking at for them to be the same thing. He want this, they want the same thing Prime did for Jack State over there with them. And pressure, I feel like he, he'll stand up to that right now. Man. Different level of ball, man. It's like playing with varsity players on JV. No, I agree with that. Different level of ball, but when it's Prime and what he transformed the whole atmosphere of the HBCUs and everything with that, that's what they looking at. Hey, you said people gonna hold it. People gonna hold him to that, man, bro. You said that uh, he probably was one of the only coaches that could have brought us back to kind of where we want to be, like championship program, you know, whatever the case is. And you, you, you might be right, bro. I think he give us a better chance than Hugh. Um, <laughs> again, you say that we could have some good season, a two loss season, man. That's that's very far fetched in my opinion <laughs> right now. Um. And that's just as honest as I can be. But I know he's got the guys around. I want to bring up something, bro. So we talk about Hugh, the staff he's bringing in, man. 
recently they brought in uh is it Wesley McGriff? Yeah. For the third stint, right? Mm -hmm. This is his third stint. This is a guy who's, you know what I'm saying, been around the college game for years and years. Is he a former Auburn player? No. No. Okay, okay. I just wanted I just wanted to know. Okay. My question is again, man, when if we can keep bringing these guys around to be a, a part of the program, why can't they have a head job, man? And I know where Bell going, but it's 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 just man, it's just it's shocking to me. It's shocking, man, that we can bring a guy back for the third time as a, a assistant head coach, assistant, you know, defensive coordinator, deep coordinator. Um, but they wasn't good enough for the head job, bro. What you think, Bill? Man, I just uh, like I said, it, it starts from the top down. And like Ken said, we not even gonna mention that guy's name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. You know, when that when that money coming in and they gotta say so and who's coming in here, man, they're not gonna let they're not gonna let us get in, man. When I say us, y'all know what I mean. They're not gonna let us get in. So e even when you look at a you look at a Allen Green, we had Allen Green in position, man. And I think they I think he was a puppet, you know. So I think they kind of tailored and micromanaged who he brought in. Um and, and what they were able to do, you know what I'm saying? So even with them putting somebody like an Allen Green in position, that's still, you know what I'm saying, still not his call, you know what I'm saying? They, they brought him in because he said, yeah, I'll do what y'all what, what, what want me to do, you know what I'm saying? And they see that that didn't last long. You know, how, how long was he there, two years? Maybe. I mean, two years, Maybe. you know what I'm saying? So it was that to extend it's, Bruce's contract. It, it's not that McGriff isn't good enough. It's not that lack isn't good enough. We just not the people that's that got that that got the power not giving us, you know, that opportunity, man. And it's sad, but like I said, we, we know that. We've been all we walk those halls, we walk those those indoor facilities, we know what it is. So it's not surprising to us. And uh, until that change, it's not gonna change. We're not gonna have no black head coach. We're not gonna have somebody that's relatable to us as far as a head coach. It's not gonna happen. Man, so so how we feel, quick, quick, how we feel about the staff that he's putting together? Is it going to be enough? I don't even know who he's hired. <clears throat> Man, being honest, um, not crime, I believe in crime. I do believe in crime. Crime, um, crime dog, former New Orleans Saints, and coached with them, D.C. with Ole Miss. You know, crime, um, and he has been with Auburn. Third time this stint, man, I, crime is very high. Good recruiter. Um, crime dog, he bring energy and everything, man. You know, real good, solid dude. But, um, fellas, back to that AD deal. Fellas, I was so surprised to hear that we had a black AD. I left the office and had to make sure. I wouldn't even believe it until I put my eyes on them, fellas. That's how crazy. And get what? I wasn't the only person. You seen everybody like me up in the hallways looking to make it shoot. It was history. Made history. Made, made history. <laughs> yeah, man. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, again, man, we, we, we got to get behind them some way, get behind our guys. Uh, but I think we settled. I definitely think we settled. And somehow, man, we just keep allowing these guys to come in and make not make the right highs, man. We, we've thrown away a lot of money uh, in the past few years with, with, with buyouts and things of that nature. Um, so I think it's going to get rough, man, which leads me to, um, again, we talk about a lot of transitions, a lot of coaches moving on, man, the transfer portal. Um, Dion, you know, obviously is, is a huge advocate of the portal, man, getting his guys. He said he bringing his Louis V luggage with him to Colorado. Um a lot of guys leaving uh, programs across the country right now. Man, how we feel about our kids, bro? So they posted in the group chat. I know y'all seen it earlier. They say during 2021, a record of over 3,000 players, over 3,000 players entered the transfer portal. Only 866 found a home. So, so again, I'm not good at math, but I know it's over 2,000 kids. Um didn't find a home, man. They back at home trying to figure out the next steps of life. How do we fix this, man? What do the kids need to hear? Because a lot of these kids who are transferring are just like us from 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 
you know, poverty stricken areas, from underrepresented communities, everything else, bro. Uh, how do we make sure these kids making the right decision, man? Uh, what What would you tell them? What would you tell yourself if you was if 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 it's a young, you know what I'm saying, collegiate athlete out here who's listening in, who ready to hop and jump ship, but just don't know where their next home at. What y'all got there for me, man? Well, I started off, man. Um, I say for any kid that's sitting there weighing the option of hopping into the portal, they need to understand the pros and cons that can come from that. As in, yeah, the pros is you get a new start over. You get a new begin date. And the bad thing about it, though, if you don't, get that opportunity, your, your your team, your coach, your teammates know that you tried to leave and how that is. And if they take you back or whatever, I don't know the whole end, ends and out with that. But I say with the kids, man, just focus on your actual well-being and what you can get from the organization, as in what it all you can get for you instead of not just leaving for coaches and stuff like that, not just leaving on that. Cause the coaches they gonna leave for the next job they um they get offered also, and no matter what they won't look at the coaches leaving like that, as in the same way of you leave. So it's always gonna get looked at it different. But that's what I would say, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't you definitely ain't gonna get looked at the same, man. If a coach leave versus the guys leaving in the portal. Mm -hmm. Man, it, I think the, the portal has made um, college football world more more like the real world, man. It's a it's a dog eat dog world, man. If you're not one of those top prospects, well known, bro, you need to know that there's a chance that you might not get picked up. So maybe you need to stay and, and grind it out your situation to make the best out of it. Um, thank God they didn't have the portal wheels around because I know few guys that would have jumped in and, and possibly got lost. And I know a few guys that would have jumped in and got picked right up. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it, everything comes with pros and cons, man. I feel guy, I feel bad for those guys who got in the portal and didn't get what they expected. But that's just that's just real life, man. And 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 their parents, you know, need to be there to help guide them to help them make that decision, man. So that's my that's my two cents on that. You said it. I'm glad you said that. Parents. It's for me, and I'm just, I'm just like, I guess rough around the edges. But for me, it started at home. You know, like I seen guys in here. I seen you guys not play. You know, what I'm saying firsthand didn't get the playing time that you thought you deserved or 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 did deserve. And I can speak for two four, and I can speak for you, smooth. Did deserve. Kenny played as a freshman. Kenny got valuable snaps. You know, what I'm saying as a freshman, I didn't get those snaps. I had to work my tail off. You know what I'm saying? I got red shirt and had to come in and work my tail out to get those snaps that I thought I deserved, you know what I'm saying, coming out of high school. So I think, like you said, it does correlate to real life, mm -hmm. a dog-eat-dog -dog world. But in my eyes, if you'll quit because you ain't getting the playing time, when the real world hits you, you really going to quit. you really going to lay down. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, we know college is doing their due diligence. They're not educating these kids and say, hey, you leave here, you got to be ready for it. They're not educating and say, hey, this is how many kids don't make it. Now they will. This this year, they'll start educating these players. Like, hey, you answer the transfer portal. These are the numbers. That's cool. This is what kids going to be presented with now. In the past, prior to this year, they have not been presented that, that information. And I will bet everything my bank count on that. You know what I'm saying? So for me, grind it out. Don't, don't, don't run away from the competition. Embrace it. Grind it out. But these kids, and like we talked about, these kids lose games. And I, I don't know who I, I think CD, I talked this about. They lose games and they ride around in charge and they burning out. You just lost. When we lose, we, we ain't no going out. We trying to figure out that damn, we hurt. We like, damn. Mm -hmm. I said, what's going on? We, they ain't even play. I said, ain't no way I'm finna go show my face. We, we ain't finna go show my face. You know what I'm saying? These kids, they, they different. It's they different. soft, man. And they need, it, it start at home. For me, it start at home, man. So I think the parents, y'all better start looking at these numbers and y'all better start ready to get, hey, we ain't quitting. You don't transfer. You stand here and you grind out. The worst, you don't get your degree. Now, granted, in some situations where coaches in that scheme just don't fit, but I feel like as a kid, you got to understand, if I'm a Robbie, I'm not going to 
uh, 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 Auburn with Brian Harson running a pro-star offense. That don't fit my skill set. I'm not going there. You know what I'm saying? But do your homework as kids as well, but they got to learn how to compete, man. They, too many kids quitting and running, and now when they don't get picked up, we say, oh, it's a transfer portal. Nah, you ain't do your homework. Nah, you don't want to stay and compete. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you got everything handed to you as a kid. So now when this real world hits you, you want to lay down. I yeah. think that's what's going on, man. These kids got to learn to fight. Fight it out. Grit it out, man. That's my take on it. <laughs> hey, man, on, what a nah. take. What a take, man. <laughs> I, I couldn't have said it better, bro. You, you man, you hit, you hit, you know what I'm saying? Everything on the head. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, it, it just makes me think, you mentioned us, bro, accountability. Man, motherfucker, we, we thought we were supposed to have been playing, bro. We would, we shouldn't have been on that field. And guess what? I could have called, you know, my, my mama back home or whoever was my people back home. And guess what? They don't know. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? They ain't been in that. They hadn't been in that smooth. It's different for you, man. You had a you had pops play SEC ball, man. You know what I'm saying? With the Gators. But times was different then. You get what I'm saying? Versus times <laughs> now. But oftentimes, bro, we can't we can't call back home and ask these questions. And majority of the time, I know personally. It was accountability of myself, bro, looking in the mirror, saying, oh, I, I'm not ready. You get what I'm saying? I think I'm ready, but I'm not ready. I shouldn't be on this field right now. Um, man, you're right, bro. We got to learn how to fight out. And another point you said, man, getting you ready for life. This mm -hmm. shit ain't fair out here. Nowhere. It, it's it's not fair um, in the corporate world, in, in, in you know, getting careers and in, in entrepreneurship, whatever it is. And it's even more eyes against you. When you look like us, you know what I'm saying? That's just facts. So, uh, man, we still got a lot of ways and a lot of things to overcome. But in this situation, man, where oftentimes, bro, we feel like sports is our way out. Shit, we in the situations that we in because we got that degree. A lot of these kids now may get played out of getting a degree. So then where they at? You get what I'm saying? And just because you got your degree don't mean you, you good, but you, you, you know, um, it definitely give you that head start, man, and, and can open some eyes in that window. So I feel, man, I feel bad about the kids who get lost more so because of the growth, bro. I think the growth that we all had from the age of 19 to 22, dog, we we are different people. You know what I'm saying? We we changed. Uh, you grow. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of kids, a lot of these kids gonna miss out on that. Mm -hmm. Those experiences are invaluable, man. You talk about. Smooth situation. This guy get his red shirt burnt eighth game of the season. You know what I'm saying? He didn't bitch and complain. Maybe he was upset in his room, but it didn't show. Chizik didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Lolly didn't know it. But damn, you know, eighth game of the season. You know what I'm saying? They didn't care about that. Smooth and guy never never tackled anybody. Never he can't he he worked his ass off and he got in there and he did what it took. You know what I'm saying? You safety's plan before you, you know whatever habit maybe the first year you weren't ready but when you come back after that spring you took off you came back you had a different look in your eyes you, you continued to work same thing with kenny he getting those valuable snaps man and then it's like oh he coming back now they looking for 92 to make plays we got to come in the weight room get strong it's and everybody grinding it out you know what i'm saying so you gotta you gotta have people around you too that's that's like that and that's gonna hold you now nah, bro you ain't quitting get on this line let's go you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying and that they don't have that, man. They they're not putting themselves around like like we put ourselves around each other. We all like kind of in the same place in our lives and what we're doing and where we headed and what we want to do. These kids gotta do the same thing at, at that age right now. They gotta do it because it's a lot more around them. The nil and people in your ear. Hey, man, come here. I can get you this and this. Put yourself around those people, man. There it is, man. Lock in, lock in, man. Listen to these guys, bro. Appreciate it, man. One more.